it's me. Today I am doing an episode of Create This Book 2. I am actually filming this intro after the fact. I've been doing that lately. So I already know things. I know what's going on in this episode. I know the pages that I'm gonna do. And let me tell you, I spent a lot of time on the pages, probably too much. So you know what? I am not going to spend a whole lot of time on this intro, which is probably for the best, because I don't really ever do anything productive in the intro. Anyway, I just kind of sit here and blab on and on and on, make dumb faces, say stupid, irrelevant things, kind of like I'm doing right now. <laughs> what the heck? I'm gonna make this short and sweet. You don't have to stare at my face for a long time today. We're just gonna jump right into doing the pages. Okay, so create this book too. I was very excited to do some pages in this. I was just seeing possibilities everywhere. Many pages, many options. I don't know what page to choose. I'm overthinking it. It's all too much. <laughs> So I decided it would probably be best for me to choose the pages at random today. So I just whipped the book open and this is what I landed on, which is quite a mess from ink bleeding through the other pages that don't need to be fixed eventually. The prompt is create whatever. Use this page to create anything you want. I'm panicking. So of course I landed on literally the most open-ended prompt in the entire book. Create whatever? No, I need direction here. I can't make decisions. So let's just do this again. Okay, open the book and already done that one. Let's just pretend that that didn't happen. And again, ah, okay, this is it. I can just feel it. Also, I already know what happened, so I know that that's it. Anyway, it says create randomness, scatter random things all over this page. Huh. I selected the randomness page at random. And Okay, I shall use my pencil to create things. So yep, start going. You got it. Don't think, just make things. Ah, a blob. Stick with me. So I did try to harness my massive amounts of energy into making some random things. This was another pretty open-ended prompt, honestly, and I almost switched to a different page, but three tries, that's just getting stupid. I did try to put random drawings here, uh, but somewhere along the way, it became kind of a pattern of sorts. Uh, we've got blobs, food, rainbows, and flowers, and that just kind of repeats. So this may not have been as random as we would have hoped for. Although truly, randomness isn't real. Nothing is really random, is it? No, I think not. It's fake. It's fake, fake, fake. Oh, this is where I decided to switch this random blob to one of my blobs. A uh, fish blob. Um, and this random blob to Froggy, making these even less random than before. Um... That's okay. I just wanted some of my favorite blobs to be here. You know, if we're gonna do blobs, let's bring in some of the faves. And now it's coloring time. Surely there's a more aesthetic way to show my colored pencils. I need to up my production value, okay? What is this? Now I'm just going to go piece by piece, lightening the pencil lines, and then just going in with the color. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do an outline or not, so I just went in without it for now, and then I'll reevaluate in the end. And oh my gosh. Coloring this entire drawing with colored pencils, it was time consuming and just so painful. If my hand could cry tears, it would cry tears. Ow. Ooh, the cramping. It was cramping. In the past, I've saved myself some misery and torment by using watercolor as the base color and then shading on top of that with the colored pencils. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, watercolor is just so... So wet. Oh gosh, I hate watching myself trying to color in the crack. It's so frustrating. I have thought about getting into alcohol markers. Oh, hand cramp again. But I have read that art made with those markers will fade significantly over time. And apparently alcohol markers were meant to be used for temporary art, but of course now all kinds of artists use them. And then I guess they just scan their artwork to preserve it. But that's not really what I'm doing here. You know, I don't want to flip through my create this book five years from now and all my artwork is just gone. On, just faded away. No, I doubt it would actually fade completely. I don't know how much or how quickly it would fade, but I don't know. That has just always kept me from using those markers because I'm afraid of that. So instead, I'll just continue to suffer with my colored pencils. <laughs> oh, oh, God. 
gosh. All right, and finishing up the coloring, it's come time to evaluate. Evaluating? And I feel like it does look just a bit mushy. So I have decided to go ahead and tack on another hour or so of work and do an outline. It's no big deal to put some time and suffering into my art, you know, that's what I'm here to do. That and say dumb crap to entertain you. But yeah, the outline definitely helped to sharpen and neaten everything up. It looks so cool. I'm gonna add my juicy highlights. Okay, that's done. Now to protect this page, I'm gonna pull out some matte Mod Podge, slide some paper underneath just to protect the rest of the book from the process of protecting this page and carefully throw on a nice coat of matte Mod Podge. Now, if you do this, you wanna be quick about it and do the minimum amount of spreading this around as possible because you can cause smudging if you're not careful and you keep on going over and over it. And remember also only use the matte Mod Podge, not the glossy. Yeah. Otherwise you may have issues with the pages sticking together. Okay, remove that paper immediately. And after about six hours of drying, this page is done. I think it looks really cool. I'm really happy with it. It was rough, but I think it turned out really great. Oh, there goes a cord. Let me just move that. See, my camera has a mess of cords around it. It's like a cord ponytail. Oh, you can see a part of my wall in the new studio. Uh-oh, hey, spoilers. Okay, so I've gotten one page done, but I'm still feeling that chaotic indecisiveness, so I'm just gonna go ahead and choose the next page at random as well. Ugh, not you. Okay, again. And aha, here we are. This prompt says, create a historical reference. Write about or draw pictures of any historical event or figure. At first, I was having a hard time coming up with an idea for this. Then I realized, it doesn't say an important historical event. It says any historical event, which means basically any event at all in the entire past of everything. So I decided to commemorate an event from my personal history, the first Create This Book episode. This is the first official episode of my new series, which was on June 19th, 2015. And oh, what a video it was, full of exciting twists and turns and just really interesting. Okay, not really. But anyway, in order to dive document this episode, I decided to use some of the pages that I created in that video as inspiration for the new art in this video. Are you following? No. And this calls for direct reference from the book itself. Bum bum. I always have to sing when I bring new things into the frame. This was the original version of Create This Book. It's been revised since then. This is the very first page that I decorated in the very first Create This Book. I've just colored a giant blendy rainbow of colors, which go slightly crooked right there and really bothers me. So I'm gonna incorporate that. I'll just create the outline for that to do something similar on this page. And what else did I do? I also made, oh, I forgot about this page. Oh, that's actually really cute oh this is fun oh what what is this wow we ain't got time for this all right if you want to see all the pages i do have a video where i flip through this entire book i'll link that anyway this is another page i did in that first episode it's just a bunch of um just shapes yeah shapes so i added some of these at the end of what will be the blendy rainbow area so it's like the blendy rainbow is crumbling into these shapes are you envisioning it do you see it finally the last page i'm gonna pull from is this create nonsensical creatures page where you're supposed to basically just invent your own little creature characters and so of course that's what i did <laughs> i was using my art history notes as scrap paper so i'm just gonna draw these little characters in the corner so the idea the idea is it'll start with this rainbow, crumble into little pieces, and then bam, out pops a bunch of little weird creatures. <laughs> So the first one that I'm drawing, the name's Boo Boo, is this little pink thing. I did keep the same character designs as the originals. I just freshened them up and tweaked them a little bit. Next is Cupcake. She creepy, okay. I feel like this was the very primitive version of Cupie that I completely forgot about. I tried to fix her up a little bit so that the design was a little less uh, terrible. Next is 
Fluffy. Gosh, what an original name. Freaking Fluffy. Come on, girl. Do better. Also, I feel like this looks so similar to that pink monster that I ended up making years later. Like, they are basically the same, but different colors. Next, we have Ricky. Ricky. <laughs> I don't know why that's a funny name for this guy. Ricky. You know, I like him. He's pretty obnoxious and loud, so I decided to put him way in the foreground with his face all up in your face. For blue creatures, I can either choose Ben or Donnie, and hands down, I'm going with Donnie, okay? He is just freaking ridiculous. I love him. And last, there's Harry. I remember I named him that because he's bald, and I thought I was being funny. <laughs> No. They're actually all basically bald, uh, except Boo Boo. Look at that head of hair. So it's kind of dumb that I just singled this one out as the bald one. A anyway, I think Harry's design is my least favorite, so I kind of hid him behind Donnie. Okay, and now for the outlining. I'm just doing a real simple, clean outline for all of these. And here comes the color. Now, I went with colored pencil to color this entire section because apparently I hadn't had enough of hand torture. So I went through creating a nice, bold, blend rainbow and I also filled in my letters with rainbow to make them a little bit more interesting then I started coloring in the shapes and I made the very interesting choice to color them almost randomly so it doesn't exactly look like the rainbow is breaking apart it looks more like someone is really bad at putting together puzzles why did I do it like that that's how I decided to color it and it's done I can't really change it finally I'm coloring in the little character and I'm just like adding some highlights and making them a little cuter than the originals, I think. Although I don't know if I agree with my decision to give fluffy pink arms and legs. Why? Why did I do that? I have to live with my questionable decisions. I do, however, love what's been done to Lil Cupcake over here. I'm loving that little double chin. Oh, it's so cute. Ricky is looking as good as ever. He hasn't aged a day. And Donnie, oh Donnie. That winning smile, the single bug eye. And then there's Harry, it's just Harry. He can go die for all I care. Ooh harsh a little too harsh okay and after a few more little touches this page is finished and here we have the old version and the new versions to look at side by side just for fun i guess it's gonna be fun the only one i've completely ignored is zoe <laughs> she looks like i don't know something from a creepy kids show and i just don't like her i don't know about you but i definitely prefer the new versions of these little characters i love them now and they really remind me of that set of rainbow monsters that I made. I, you know what? I need to have like a big reunion. Like bring all of the creatures together so they can mingle in one big group of rainbow creatures. I really like this page. I love the idea. I love that it was all inspired by my first create this book video. And hey, don't forget that I'm running a big sale on my store right now. Many of the items are currently discounted and they are limited edition items. So once they sell out, they're gone. Be sure to check it out. Link in the description. Okay, and for the last page, of the episode. That's right, we're doing the random thing again. Ugh, no. How about this? Nope. This? Uh, it's happening again. This? Uh, create a puzzle, turn this page into a puzzle. Oh, that sounds time consuming. My hands can only take so much. And bam, here we go. Create a mess. Get messy on this page. Perfect. So I'm pulling out a separate piece of paper because I want the mess to stay contained on this page. I'm cutting out a window for the instructions so we can still see them. There, now I'm putting down some paper towel and bringing out my watercolors. Pop that open. Um. You know what? Not. I'm going to start with watercolor pencils. So I'm quickly throwing on a layer of scribbling blah 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 mess using purple, orange, and yellow. And those colors specifically because I have a plan. So now I can throw on a layer of watercolor on top of that. And I was hoping that the scribble underneath would kind of like melt a little bit and spread. It did slightly, but you can't really tell. It's fine. We're not going to be overly perfectionistic about a mess. 
this. Got the watercolor layer on, now let that dry. And for the top layer of my mess here, I'm gonna add some acrylic paint. Get out a palette, mix up some nice purples and get on some yellow and a, a yellow -er and orange and all that's ready. So we're gonna just get real crazy. You ready? With the fingers in the paint. It's such a crazy mess. No, it's uh, clearly a very controlled mess, okay? I mean, I want it to look like a mess, but in reality, it's all very calculated and under control. I'm not going to simply just make this mess and leave it. I want to create a little bit of a story here. So we have to think, who has created this mess? Why are you looking at me? I'm thinking it had to have been a little creature that's a little bit wild and chaotic. How about ship? the baby. So that's done. While I let that dry, I'm gonna get out a fresh piece of paper and enter chip. Hey there, buddy. Hey, how's your tooth? Okay, so I'm drawing chip here. I was using a photo reference of a baby sitting and it was almost looking a little too realistic. Chip has a very cartoony face, so I had to kind of simplify the drawing a little bit. Let me just add some paint kind of splattered all over him. And there we go, ready for the ink. So clearly I'm drawing Chip as if he made the whole mess in the paint. He has put aside his little inner tube and he's gotten himself into a mess of paint. Here comes the color. This was pretty quick and simple to do, which was a welcome change. After all the work that I put into the last two pages, it was nice to do something a little bit easier on the hands, you know? And of course, now you see why I chose the purple, orange, and yellow for the paint colors. Those are Chip's favorite colors. Now, once I finished the little drawing, I cut it out and I'm bringing back the mess. Last minute, I decided to go in and outline some of the acrylic paint splotches, give them some little highlights, and there we go. Chip in his new form. I'm gonna seal this with matte Mod Podge before placing it back in the book. And boom, here's the final page. I think this one just came out super cute. It was really easy to create. I had a lot of fun making it. So those are all the pages that I've made for this episode. I really, really enjoyed this episode and I'm glad that I'm moving closer to completing this book. Still not that close, but moving closer. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.